do you feel like uh, because you had a kind of theater educational background before um, how do you feel like uh, actors today who finish school how do you think education could help in giving people an advantage in in taking picking up digital skills Oh, I think it's a huge opportunity. I think I'm seeing some some drama schools sort of come to us and are starting to kind of go, oh, we're doing a, a show online or we're, we're working with Guildford School of Acting, at Guildford School of Acting on their technicians course at the moment. Um, cause there's a huge, cause it's very, it's a very accessible way to make theatre. Actually, it's, it can be very cost effective to go. We've got six performers. We can make a show. We can just jump yeah. into Zoom or Webby yeah. or Teams and we can make something happen. So I think it's very accessible for young people. I think actually for students graduating as well, I think they have grown up with a different relationship to technology, to, to my generation. And I think it's going to be really exciting as they embrace the digital world that they'll be able to bring a whole new perspective and a whole new set of skills into yeah. it you know i think we we sometimes slightly get away with it at the moment that we can probably do something in a digital show that is giving kudos as being technologically amazing because we're working with an audience who who you know aren't on tiktok yeah. <laughs> and i think as we embrace the tiktok generation they'll be going i've seen i've seen people do that before that's you know and but i think that's what will be really good for it because then it will elevate it yeah. to the next level i can imagine that people who who you know all the different roles in the industry that people feel like oh i will be without a job because they will not need a stage anymore and they will not, will not need lighting anymore how do you see that because i had a feeling that almost every role within your company just um expanded on the skills they they had uh Yeah, we've very much taken our normal teams and just mapped them into the digital world. So we still use stage managers, designers, production managers, sound designers, lighting designers. Um, we've managed to take that that all through with us. Um, and I can't see a world where we don't need them. I think, you know, I think probably the most significant change being for a lighting designer, because obviously it's very <laughs> different when you're dealing with people in their own homes and saying, can you put a lamp on the floor there? Or trying to get green screens to work. But we're not far away from the more hybrid stage. And then I think the lighting will become Even more, massively yeah. more significant again. So, yeah, um, so the, and actually I think working more closely, like you said, the fact that you have really a team working together and people are willing to pick up those roles, it's, 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 it's quite interesting. Eh? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna look at my little paper. Uh, yes, so now the big thing is, you're building your own uh, platform. So how, how did ha that happen? Because I'm quite excited about that. I, I do believe there's going to be a huge demand for, for people eager to, to wanting to try it out and test, but I know it's not like Snap It is there. Yes, so, we, so we've got funding from Innovate UK. Um, and part of that is to, we're going to have five actors in a rep company for six months to kind of develop this new platform and work in it. And we're doing a report into the state sustainability implications, but we're also creating our own platform. I say we, we're, we're working with some proper tech people who know what they're doing to build a platform. And I think what's different, I think there's a few different sort of platforms in development for the theatre industry at the moment. From what I can tell, what's really unique about what we're doing is we're actually saying we're not really bothered about the performance side. <laughs> We just need a screen we can pipe the performance in through. There is a lot of incredible vision mixing software out there. It already exists. <laughs> There's, you know, a lot of great programs for sound editing and, you know, mixing. They already exist. We don't need a platform that does that level of conferencing integration. Now, obviously, if you're doing a conference in, you know, Zoom's perfect because it takes care of that for you and it can do virtual backgrounds and it can do all these wizzy things that we're actually going, you know, we don't need that. So what ours is all about is how the audience is seen in the experience and how we can replicate the experience of coming into an auditorium and sharing a space with an audience. Um, conferencing platforms at the moment treat everyone as equal. <laughs> you can have a presenter, but everyone else is an equal size. And actually what we would love to be able to do is go, here's the performance. And then here's, you know, a hundred small people around the edges of that space who are all sharing this moment. So we can see when we all laugh or we can see when we all clap or we can all dance along for a moment. And, 
you know, and, and much like Zoom, it will have that flexibility to be seen or to not be seen if people don't want to be, but actually that it's, it's, that's the, that's the bit we're really trying to, and also to have more creativity of how we use that. So it's not one layout, it's not one possibility. We can create experiences that are for smaller audiences or larger audiences, slightly more interactive experiences, things that feel more like being in an interactive game, things that are kind of feel far more like you're going into like a gorgeous opera house and experiencing something. Yeah, super. So you're actually looking at it again from the from the experience of the of the audience, eh? which is which is which yes. is something uh, we, we can never forget. That's why we 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 work in I think in the creative industry. Eh? So um, yes. is there is there anything else you would like to share with us in this where you feel like um, this is really something uh, I would advise you to do or, or not to do uh, because you see a lot of people who who really see no way out eh? in in the in the period we are you, you were lucky to to survive eh? but there's a lot of colleagues out there who have it very hard to to survive it's not you're not going to be in a in a happy place, let's let's be honest about that. But um, where do you think the, the future of theatre will be going? Um, because the big uh, companies are really struggling as well. Yeah, and it's it's it changes so rapidly as well. I feel like the answer I would have given, you know, even three months ago would be different to the answer I was giving today. I think, you know, we're going to see a lot more digital work. Um, I suspect there are a chunk of, of companies who are going to adopt it to work that will be quite short term. I think we'll see people creating productions that are streamed, creating digital shows, and then dropping that quite fast when they can have a live audience in. Um, I think some of that will be to do with the effectiveness of kind of monetizing it and growing a digital audience. And how I'm expecting that we're going to have an overlap in the audience we take with us into digital that some of our traditional, you know, analog audience will come with us. I don't expect they're all going to come with us. So I think people, I think all organisations are going to have a kind of crossroad moment of who, weighing up which which sector of their audience is really their priority. Is it keeping your new digital audience engaged or is it as quickly as possible doing work for your, your analog audience? Um, and obviously that varies a lot on everyone's kind of funding situation and, you know, whether their responsibility is widening reach and making their work as accessible as possible or whether actually they need a kind of paying audience who will, because generally you, know, you, you, you generate far more ticket income from people individually paying for their tickets to turn up in the theatre. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be really, it's going to be really interesting. I think for us we're also really excited about those access possibilities that actually even we're considered to be charging one of the higher ticket prices for digital work even at that price it's so much cheaper to attend a digital show than it is a physical show and I think the scope to really connect with people who don't normally go to the theatre it's just got huge huge potential um, so I think we might just, if it goes, if digital theatre kind of really lives up to the potential I think it has, I think we'll just see it it kind of exist alongside theatre and really become its own thing and grow and grow and grow and become quite independent of what yeah. theatre, you know, traditional theatre companies are doing and they will carry on in a sort of similar way and probably just record more of their work than they used yeah. to. So and more use it as a as a digital archive to then uh, air it as a as a classic way, but we all know that that yeah. that people paying for that uh, the willingness is decreasing a lot. They're really looking for that life experience. That's what I remembered from reading the the, the research and the insights. It's the real actually being there and being physically there. But it does mean, like you mentioned before, trying to reach out to that new audience in a new different marketing strategy. You need to adapt and 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 try and reach that audience. It's a different way. Yeah? But I think the, the the strength you have is that you already had your very your community. Uh, you already owned that relationship, and you you take it along. How many how many um, theater pieces did you? Developing those short, I think it was it five. I thought it was amazing the, the yeah. amount of uh, and the speed of uh, of how your production cycle went. It's amazing. They really, yeah, we've done five pieces of theatre and moved all our education work online. But our education work 
um, the shows tend to get the kind of headline coverage and the reports written on them, but the education work has gone through an equally dramatic change in how we work. And we're, we're teaching online, but we're doing so much more than this is a drama club in Zoom. We have whole websites built where children go in and explore a school and click on different rooms and, it, you know, watch video content and then go into a live lesson and... And then within the lesson, it's not your standard theatre lesson. It's like more about creativity and using the window as your performance space and making their own digital theatre. And so, yeah, we've just like fully, uh, yeah. fully em- embraced Because that it. educational um, uh, um, pillar you have is quite I- important. I think it's also very important if you see how young kids are struggling now uh, during the pandemic to get in touch and to uh, and it, it's hard eh? uh, I think there's really some interesting lessons and inspiring things to to learn from that as well and to to pick it up eh? because I see that a lot of people um, I know who work as a as a teacher they're trying to replicate what they do today by you know adding a plexi screen and just still getting people in the room but I think there's also this next layer where you can t- take it up as a new way of, of, of giving, a, giving a class and teaching. Absolutely. And we've always, you know, in the same way with the shows, the other thing that we do that's a bit different is we've always monetized that. So, you know, we do an awful lot to increase access with bursaries and, you know, we do a lot of free places and a lot of work with, you know, um, you know, the less affluent areas around where we live. And, we, you know, we do an awful lot of that kind of outreach and engagement work. But we do that because we monetize ev- everything we can. So, you know, where the people in, in Oxfordshire who kind of, well, actually, it's not just Oxfordshire, it's all over the country now and all over the globe who do drama clubs. But we charge them to do that. And I think, you know, it's one of the things that I, would, I, I think for anyone starting out, if they're kind of looking at digital work from scratch, is, is the value of promoting and running your own box office building your own customer list and not being afraid to charge for your work is it stab value what you're doing i think you know we really felt at the beginning so much was given out for free and it was almost kind of like people were saying oh well, well actually the arts isn't really worth paying for we'll do this for free and actually you know like we all know how much work and how much value there is there and we shouldn't be afraid of of uh of of asking for money yeah for i think that's that's a, a, a very important uh, thing and i i do i feel the same uh, i try to push people to to still charge for what they do but not everyone is 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 in that mindset yet but it is important if you want to value something there's no you don't have to be ashamed to ask money for it people value it more. yeah and that often you can you can make more meaningful change for the people who really need it when you're charging the people who who have the ability yeah. to pay. I think that's the thing we've learned. And I think we've seen over and over again that sometimes if you just put a, a sort of, oh, you know, there's discounted tickets available. Because we know, I think this is again the advantage of because we know our audience. We know that if we publicise a general sort of, oh, this one's much cheaper for whatever reason, it's often the people who've got the most capacity to pay a high price who get the discounts. So we've kind of learned that keep your price, keep your price as high as you need it to be and then be really targeted and strategic about where you give that support. So you make a really big difference to a small, potentially a smaller number of people than opening everything out for free to a lot of people who really don't yeah. need that. Um, You've been talking about that Christmas show for quite a while. What's so special about that Christmas show? I think it's the most significant show we do every year. It's the Christmas show that really is, I mean, partly it's what bankrolls the rest of the year normally, but also it's, I mean, I can't imagine Christmas without having a Christmas show, without that being part of my life. It's, you know, and actually we're working with the team that we work with in the physical theatre every year. So there's a real kind of feeling of the Christmas family coming together and making um, something for us. But I think we feel very, um, like we have a responsibility to the audience to be doing something joyful and silly and surreal, total surreal escapism. There's nothing about this at all that's kind of about making an edgy statement about the situation at all. This is just complete fantasy and fun. magic. So you have the you have yeah. the last line for the for this recording. You can uh, close uh, close off with your last wishes for everyone watching this. 
I think, uh, well, I think my last thought would be that it's it's an absolute joy to be asked to participate in things because I think at the moment we feel the responsibility more than ever to share what we know with other people. Um, and we'd encourage people to take that offer and, and read and learn and listen, but also to then pass it on. That This isn't about a few of us holding the keys to the new digital kingdom. It's about everyone learning and discovering and developing this together, because I really think it can be a way we can get through this in a really exciting um, way that will set us up for the future. Super. Working together and sharing knowledge, I think that's that's key. Yeah. I get goosebumps. So yeah. Lucy, keep up the good work and say hi to everyone. Um, and, and we'll see each other uh, soon again. 